Susie, Susie. I thought I was coming with coming in with like a hey now, but then I was like hey now, but Susie. Like, <laughs> I like it. How are Susie, you? Susie, episode four seventy two. Doing well. How are you? Oh, I'm doing fantastic. Now that the leak in my ceiling is fixed. Everyone what keeps the hell, messaging Suze? us being like, what is going on at Sarah's apartment? What? You would think that I live in like, I, where, where do I live? Like, <laughs> well, this, th- th- I swear luxury apartments is in the name of my building. Right. Luxury <laughs> apartments. What the hell? I mean, of course, they did get bought out and the management changed. Remember when I talked about that? And now it's common by Stella. Maybe I should have looked in that. And now uh, it's just called common. And now I'm like, oh, this is a common apartment with some common. Pro- Are these common problems? Because they don't feel very common. No, it feels apocalyptic over there. Apocalyptic. OK, so here I am. Rest. This is this is like right after the crazy week of like, you know, election question yes. mark stuff where i was like question. got maybe six hours of sleep in eight days and so <laughs> i'm like Sarah. i set myself a goal like i i you know i like because you know it's important to do these things and i need to be like my own parent so i made mm. a sticker chart and i have oh like God. little goals on my Your sticker chart i'm not chart. I really do. I have a weekly sticker chart and it has one of the things on there is put the phone away by 11 p.m. Sometimes okay. I go to 12, but whatever. That's a good, uh, that's a good tip. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, and so I have like a bunch of different things, uh, different tasks. One, two, three, four, five. Put the phone away by 11, drink two bottles of water, uh, do my workout, water slash check on plants and do my meditations. And then if I get 20 stickers a week, my reward is to buy myself a new plant. So I'm like really <laughs> trying to do this and um, put the phone away by 11. So I put the phone away by 11. Then at about 11, 10, I'm like, what's that noise? No. It sounds like... And Ren is now like in that twilight sleep yeah. mode, and also he's got a big work day the the next day. Like mm-hmm. we we had friends over the night before, and we had like drank wine, and so we like you know we're a little hungover the next day, and we're like oh we're gonna get to get some good rest, and mm-hmm. we're gonna go to bed early, and because he's got a big project the next day, and then drip drip. And at first I'm like oh it's got to be the bathtub because Ren just took a shower. Right. Nope. Not the bathtub. The sound gets quieter. So that's like the last thing I want. And so I go into the kitchen and there is a huge puddle all over, like splash all over the floor. Like the entire, I'm like, what the fuck? I look up, Mm -mm. there is water coming out of every single opening in the ceiling that we have every light fixture and in my mind i'm like we're gonna get electrocuted there's like every light fixture is the is like buckets are coming through and it's splashing off the light so you can't even put a bucket underneath because the the water isn't coming down in like a single drip we were filling we had one two three four five six one two three four five six seven eight nine ten buckets in the kitchen and trash cans and everything i was running out of buckets then we call the emergency number that gets rerouted to it like a some central hub in new york because it's like a bunch of different apartments that they manage then Mm. they i guess call somebody else we're waiting there for like 15 minutes the guy from the apartment complex comes there with a laundry basket with like three towels in them i look at him and i'm like stop it we're gonna need a little more than just that and (laughs) i i mean for real and so then he's like waiting another guy to come everything was a hassle he didn't have any tools he was like oh i need a a a fill i need a a screwdriver for the lamp it sends his other guy to go get a screwdriver after he's gone for like five minutes like do you want still dripping it's right here still dripping yeah everything is still dripping and and a mess (sighs) so turns out the the apartment right above us had a flood in their garbage disposal or something in their sink line that stopped up it started flooding and then all of the dishwashers and everything from the fourth floor third and second are all connected and so the person above on the fourth floor ran the dishwasher and then that backed everything up even more and so we were getting all of the water from the fourth floor and the third floor all raining down on us and then the part that i was most annoyed with i mean a 
apart from like the dripping and everything uh, <laughs> and the big gigantic mess and the fact that we were up till three o'clock in the morning uh, was because then you like don't want to go to how can I go to bed they put a fan in there they're sucking water out they're sucking water out of our ceiling lights with a vacuum I'm like this is craziness and uh, wait the part so that was, whose fault is this exactly this is the part I'm annoyed at okay, okay. so <laughs> As he's like doing the the drain and everything, he's like, "Yeah, we uh, we're not sure if it if it's like you know this drain that's your drain that's clogged or the what." And I wanted to be like, "Okay, I don't know much <laughs> about plumbing, but I do know <laughs> if okay. I'm on the floor below and the water is coming through my ceiling, I do understand gravity. <laughs> I do know about gravity, and that's probably not the drain in my sink." <laughs> and and so you know how good I am at like uh, yes. you know making sure no hair gets caught, making sure nothing oh that's not supposed God. to. You know I I'm very big on like breaking down the fat bergs. I right. know about this shit. Yeah. We talk about this. This is like episode 162 through 167, I'm sure. Yes. of the podcast. So like uh, don't try to pull that game on me. And and I think also what so then there was that problem. And at the same time, the temperature is getting colder, so we need to start using our heater. But they, they still haven't fixed the heater from the last leak that we had when our other room flooded. And they said, oh, we're just going to – we're going to, like, uh, uh, close the line, and then when we get the part, we'll replace it. Well, then we got new management, and nobody ever fixed the part. And so now they, you know, came back, and if they try to tell us, like, one of those, oh, it's it, – they're two separate issues, so – I'm, this I, is I'm not to, acceptable. No, it's unacceptable. And, and this is like the millionth a thing, though. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I feel like you should it's be able to get out of the lease. I, Suze, I have torn through that lease. If there's anybody who <laughs> it work, who's a legal uh, <laughs> uh, uh, person who can help me with some kind of claim on this, I have tried to write to them, and they direct me. They're like, here are some resources. And it's like the, uh, oh. It'll be like the Jewish Assistance League for like uh, th- th- ridiculous resources that I'm not going to use, or like le- <laughs> like a uh, um, uh, elderly assistance program. I'm like, this is not helpful. This is not what I need. Because this to, to me sounds negligent. It does, and the fact that we can't use any of the stuff that oh, everything is awful. I mean. Is it everything. fixed at all or are you just swimming yeah, around it's fixed. your apartment they, right No, now? they fixed it. They came in and they fixed it all. And then um, I was very happy because I was in sessions and everything and they had somebody come and uh, they had a, a, somebody come clean the place too, like everything that where it dripped everywhere. So I was real happy about that. I mean, that was but disgusting what I saw on Insta it was, story. Thank you. It was. And I was just like, <sighs> I did not give myself a sticker that night. Oh, I don't. I think you should have. I do think I should. Even though I did technically, but then I put the phone away. But then I couldn't just go to bed because how can I, I like go to bed? I think that was an emergency. After- you're so funny yeah. how you're strict on yourself. I'm like, well, you know, got to get the sticker. You know, wow. uh, damn. Yeah, I'll make up for it in other ways. In a, and I did go to bed last night. I did do it last night. Oh, got to put. When my that sticker catastrophe on happened, did you cry? No, I did. You know, what's funny is, is I did like, ugh, poor Ren, I come out, he's always like asleep and I'm always the one that discovers the leak. Which, thank goodness I do. But he, co- I, I, I tell him that the same enthusiasm I bring when he tells me he gets a promotion or something great happened is the same energy I'm going to bring when I discover <laughs> uh, water dripping through the ceiling. So I was like, oh, Ren, we've got a leak. And, you know, he's like, it's okay. Like, calm down. Everything's fine. And so I, uh, I have to work on being a li- uh, uh, being non-reactive. But really? I feel like that is – I mean, I'm not cr- – I didn't go crazy. I didn't, I'm not, like, screaming. But it's hard for me to come out to a kitchen – flooded and no, not be yeah, like I support, holy fuck yeah i so, support and I don't the reaction think I did that. yeah so you know i'm good i have to be i'm gonna be if it happens you know after 11 p.m i i'll be a little more okay um honey we've got a little bit of an issue so does so, ren feel like he's unflappable yeah he's like he's he's definitely he's like lucas they, they're so similar they're very good at remaining calm under pressure or mm-hmm. under in an emergency. Like Lucas, he's a firefighter. He's never going to run to any... I mean, I can remember as a kid... Well, I wasn't a kid. I was like... Well, I was still a kid. But I was babysitting and, and like our stove caught on fire. The in, inside the <laughs> oven caught on fire. I love and, this like, story. And like my brother was so... I'm like freaking out. It's on fire! It's on fire! 
and it, I'm, it's open. And my brother's like, hang on a sec. Walks yeah. over and just shuts it. And I'm like, wow. Oh, okay. And I don't he was have so, that he was like six. And I was like, you know, this is, he's so I calm. Mean, this is so why we were on reality chill. TV, frankly. It's, that's what I say. I'm like, you have to under, I'm on reality, I'm on reality TV and I have a podcast where my job is to like <laughs> react. be excited, enthusiastic, yeah. to react. Could you imagine? Like, right. I can't turn, I can't turn it off. So, so that, yep, I, I'm going to, I'm working on that. Um, but that was, that was exciting. And, well, and I know that, like, we don't want water coming through the roof, but we do want no. it coming onto our bum thanks oh, to so, our tushy yes. bidets. I will say I've had zero toilet problems. Those, <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> I love my tushy. My bum is sparkly clean. And you know what we didn't get to talk about the last time? The tushy to go. Yes, the tushy to I'm go. I'm a huge fan. Huge fan. I loved all the products. Like yes. they tushy hey, towels, tushy towels, which I yes. loved because I follow all these zero waste sites, and they always want you to use like reusable toilet paper, which essentially is like cloth. But theirs always look kind of like skanky, and yeah. so the tushy ones were so nice and soft. And I was like, I could Perfect use these. Color. Yes. Yeah, but the um, Tushy Bidet is so great because as you guys all know, I mean, we have the toilet paper problem, which is so wasteful, and it really isn't that clean to use toilet paper only. And so the Tushy Modern Bidet Attachment democratizes the blessings bestowed by bidets and offers clean buttholes to everyone. So they... it. Cleans your butt with a precise stream of fresh water for just 79 bucks. Very affordable. You can ditch all those paper products and uncomfortable oh, chafing. That's like buying toilet paper like three times. Right, Have you that's what bought I'm that saying. stuff? That shit is like paper gold. It, it pays for itself. And it comes with a 60 day risk free guarantee and a 12 month warranty. And as Sarah said last time, they're super easy to install. We finally got ours up and running um, on our new toilet. And it is a dream come true. So here's the scoop. You can get 15% off Hello Tushy bidets plus free shipping right now at hellotushy.com slash brain candy. This is Hello Tushy's best offer. So make your holidays, get it, a little happier and your brown Friday, double get it, a little cleaner by going to hellotushy.com slash brain candy for 15% off bidets and free shipping. Hellotushy.com slash brain candy. What a great service. Yes. Oh, okay. So now, now that I've, I've vented about my yes. apartment yes. and I feel much better. Mm-hmm. Oh. We can dive into to the the stuff I really wanted to talk yeah, about. Yeah, let's hear it. Yes. What is on okay, your mind so today? I found some really fun stories uh, over the last week um, and divided them into two categories. Okay. Kick-ass ladies <laughs> and dumbass dudes. Oh, that is so hard to choose and great that you put them together. Yeah, right? Okay, so I thought I'd kick things off uh, with some kick-ass ladies and mm-hmm. so... Uh, Big, huge shout out to a woman named Emily Harrington. Did you hear about yes. this? She is, yes. I'm so first proud of her. woman and fourth person ever to free climb El Capitan. Yes. I love this story so much. My, one of my favorite parts, she's my age. Wow. Because I think so. There, I remember when I went back to college, it went to Cal State Long Beach. I really felt like I missed out on like the collegiate sports experience. And, you know, I like really considered myself after doing the challenge and after Susie telling me that I am an athlete (laughs) and, (laughs) you know, and, uh, and so I wanted, I was like, man, should I try? And what I had in mind, I was like, maybe I'll join the crew and I'll do rowing. And then my friends were like, Sarah, you are too old and everybody's what? young blah 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 uh, for real i had people who were like mm, come on you're you're not gonna wow out- that's so I, like, get- I know <laughs> i don't see those friends anymore so <laughs> um uh so i love a story about somebody who's you know not 18 crushing and this like yeah, is something right. that you can really do your whole life and it it's such a cool sport and I just love that she has like broken barriers and um, 
I thought when I first read it, it says like she free climbed El Capitan. In my mind, I thought it was that was climbing without ropes. Yeah, but me that's too. Free, I was confused free by solo that. Free solo climbing. So free solo climbing is the climbing without ropes. And she climbed the thing that uh, she did that was really spectacular is setting the single day. Yes, record. she did it in so, one day. Yeah, and she climbed with the guy who like Alex Honnold, the guy who um, that movie free solo. No way. Yeah, so she climbed with okay. him and then this other guy named a- – her boyfriend is Adrian uh, – I think his name's Ballinger or Bollinger. Um, and he climb- – he's like a Mount Everest climber. Okay. So she's got that guy as her boyfriend and Alex Honnold is like, you know, the guy who's climbing with her. But Sarah, and so they- I don't yeah. understand. Like when they called it free whatever it was, free – Free climbing. Okay. So free so climbing wh- is when you're – setting the route so like she's climbing it there's a rope if she falls but there's not an assistance of a rope so which is basically like no there any big mountain yeah that's that's most climbing most climbing is um climbing with a a rope if you fall and then there's top roping which is somebody on the rope is above you but in order to climb those big faces, you have to free climb it. You have to, like, climb it with the rope, like, with yourself setting the rope. And I don't know if there are bolts or if it's what they call trad climbing, mm-hmm. which is where you set these um, these bolts that can be removed. Like, you have to find the cracks in the rock to set them, and it's very difficult because it's just using the natural features. Mm-hmm. And then there's bolted climbing, which is when... There already are bolts that are in the wall, oh, yeah, and all yeah, you're yeah. doing is clipping in with with um, like a carabiner that you already have that's attached to you. And and I mean both of them. So like one person climbs up and sets the route, and then they the people below them are now top roping, and they're climbing with the ro- assisted ropes. So whoever goes first is the free climber. Yeah, and then. Free soloing is climbing without the ropes. And Do you that think is it's like, weird who the that fuck does that? I kind of feel like that should be illegal. <laughs> uh, for sure. Oh, I mean, okay. part of it is, uh, I, t- I mean, there's so, that's that, in that movie, in Free Solo, they say that the, the, there, I don't, I think they say that there are no free solo climbers who have not died climbing like that. They all die like that. Yeah, it's a death wish. It's a death wish. Like eventually you, oh, no, 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 no. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Remember when we were talking about that moment we regret? I always think of that every time, look, when yes. I almost died but didn't die. So it's I horrifying. can't. Oh. But even when Emily was climbing, she took a really bad fall during that climb. And she slammed her head onto oh, the fuck. side of the rock. And blood, she, they said below her, like blood was spilling all over mm. her helmet and all over like you know, the side of the mountain and she thought she was going to have to stop, but they kept going and she made it all the way up in 21 hours, 13 minutes and 51 seconds. Jesus. Isn't that badass? It makes and she me... did it. Oh, go ahead. No, I just like almost feel sick. Like I did it. Right. <laughs> right. Don't you, it makes like, to me, it Visceral. makes my toes curl. Yeah. And it makes my feet get like weird and sweaty. <laughs> like why do my weird toes curl? My feet get weird and sweaty. <laughs> yes. And she, what is also badass about it is, uh, she took a spill again, like she had a really bad fall. I think it was last year or so that landed her in the hospital. And she, I didn't hear the details of it or anything. It didn't say in the article, but I mean, she said after that fall, I'm determined to like beat this and I'm determined to wow, conquer that's that. that's not what and I would feel. <laughs> me either. I'd be like, okay, cool. So there's run. my, I'm good. It was fun. Glad I didn't die. I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> Like I still, I went surfing with my brother a little bit ago and I still, it's still hard for me to get over a really bad accident I had when I hit my, like I went just as they call it over the falls and the the surfboard just went nose dived and I hit my head and it just, oh God, it was so, and now I get like flashbacks to that every time and to, to overcome that. And I, I, I mean, you'd have to. It takes some mental strength. I don't mm-hmm. know if I could do that. Lunacy. So, like, shout out to Emily. Yeah, maybe first she'll, person, like, fourth, take a breather first now. Woman, fourth woman ever. Or fourth person ever. I don't think she... These I people think the never opposite. do. Yeah. I think they're like... And she's got a boyfriend who is the climber like that. They're just like... They're in you know, it. Yeah. They're in it. 
we're going to see, like, if they stay together, we're going to see their kids <laughs> setting world records. Yeah, you're right. Mm-hmm. That's, Aww. like, really cool. When I was reading um, The Sports Gene uh, by David Epstein, uh, one of the things I loved about that, well, I mean, I love that book for, like, a million reasons, um, but it talked about how we have this whole new generation of athletes that are, are coming up because... Uh, like celebrity, like sports celebrities are like getting married. Yes. And they're amazing. <laughs> athletic right. Genes they're freaks are of give, nature. Yes. They're Beautiful. like, could, like, yes, it's so awesome. Like two pro tennis players get married. What do you think? What kind of kid do you think they're right. going to have? Yeah. You know? Well, right. Not I, a, I mean, maybe a bookworm, but a bookworm that has a mean backhand. I know for sure, though, that their kids would love Kiwi Co. The kids of any age from zero to uh, – from age, what, two to uh, 200. <laughs> yes. Me too. KiwiCo is so great and it's perfect for the holidays if you're trying to think of what to get for a child in your life. These boxes, they come right to your door and they include a project and the project is different each month. And it's just such a great way to learn um, science, art, geography. It's all hands-on. So like when I've been teaching Lincoln this year, I've been trying to find – projects that allow him to be, move because he's um, fidgety and mm-hmm. doesn't like to sit still. So I have to try to get creative and think of ways of learning that let him sort of be active. And these yes. boxes are great because they're tactile and you can, they're sensory and then you're learning while you do it and it's creative and so fun. Um, and they encourage your kid to be an innovator and a creative thinker. I just love stuff like that where it's like they're into it and I know that they're educa- getting an education. So, yes, it's Kiwi- super fun, super fun. And like Sarah I got my said, crate, and my crate was a star watcher, like a star themed, um, stargazer themed one, which I thought was so perfect because oh. Ren and I love camping, and we're really into that. So the projects in there. Uh, design your own constellation and make a light up lantern in a little constellation lantern that totally works. It's so fun. And then a solar spinner that's a mechanical model of the sun, earth, and moon. So when you ask like, hey, how does the sun circle around the moon? And how does the moon that like you create a little spinner that shows you the orbits and how they they work together. So you're like learning. So I ask myself that question all the time of like, I have to say, okay, wait, the sun goes around there. So now I got the <laughs> right. model. It's all good. Never Kiwi stop learning, Coast, people. Redefining learning with hands-on projects that build confidence, creativity, and critical thinking skills. There's something for every kid or kid at heart at KiwiCo. Get 50% off your first month plus free shipping at any crate line with code BRAINCANDY at KiwiCo.com. That's 50% off your first month at K-I-W-I-C-O.com, promo code BRAINCANDY. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Ah, so there's our first badass Kick-ass, bitch. Kick-ass, yes. Kick-ass lady. Kick-ass so lady. now I might as well just give you a little uh, uh, jackass dude, right? <laughs> yes. Those just are kind of like over. my preference, but yeah. Okay. So Right, of course. So this one, we're going to say he's a jackass, but he's trying to be better. <laughs> so this I felt like was so perfect, uh, especially since we talked about a, a couple episodes ago what the heck a fuck boy is. Yes. Okay. So I found on Vice this article where uh, a guy wrote in. It's kind of like one of those um, advice columns, you know? And yeah. so this guy wrote in and said, hey, man, I'm dating a few people at the moment. I keep getting with them because I'm afraid of letting them down. I know what I'm doing is bad in the long term, but in the short term, I can't seem to reasonably be able to stop. What's the right way uh, of going about this? Basically, how do I stop being a fuck boy? Right. So this is somebody who wrote in saying, like, look, I'm a fuck boy, clearly. How yeah. do I stop doing this? All right. And I thought this was really interesting because I... You know, I really look at it from the perspective of, like, the female, obviously. Mm -hmm. And in reading this article and even in just hearing that, it kind of changed, like, the definition of it. So the main association for, like, fuckboys, according to this article and according (laughs) to what we talked about before, is ghosting and sleeping with people with who they have no intention of dating. And so they focus on the article of, like, a fuck boy equals a boy who fucks. So let's focus on the latter. Like, a boy who fucks, that's totally fine. Boys fuck, girls fuck, totally fine. The problem isn't about what you do. It's about the clear or really unclear intentions of what you do. And so this guy in the article talked about 
it being like having painful conversations, like wanting to avoid painful conversations and how we think of like, you know, part of me when I think about fuckboys is like, or even just that term, it sounds like, oh, this is like, you know, a modern thing. And this must be because of this, like, you know, uh, people are more like we have Twitter or not Twitter, but Tinder and all this stuff and it's all available. But now it makes me think that it's more about the socialization of men and how we're, we're like the avoiding painful conversations and like what this guy said was a fear of letting people down. I relate to this. I I feel bad for him. I know that feeling. That changes things. (laughs) Because like his intention is to not hurt someone. And even though intellectually he knows that in so doing, he's actually going to hurt them worse. It's like it's in the short term, he he's sparing their feelings. And I do that all the yes. time. And it's so, it's such a bad trait. Right. And it says like, I mean, even right away, the, the person responding said, hey man, thanks for writing in and recognizing the need to grow in this area. Most yes. men hide away from learning to have the potential or learning to have potentially painful conversations. Yeah. And so one of the things that I thought was really interesting to, to help people. And I think this works for men and women that, and when I really thought about this, we have all this fear about ending things. And we have all this fear about like, like you said, like letting the other person down. There's almost this idea that we have to like explain to them why we don't want to see them anymore. Mm -hmm. And in one of the things that, that really stood out to me in this article is uh, they said sourness is usually over how the breakup happens, not that it happens. So think back to mm. all of your breakups. Are you ever mad? And when I thought about that, I was like, oh my God, that's so true. I can't think of any breakups that I had where I was like, oh my God, I'm so devastated that that relationship ended. And, you know, it like usually when I think back, when I retell the story, like I think about, you know, remember Jim, I tell that story and I, <laughs> t- I'm like, where he, like I knocked on his door when I was supposed to go hang out and he was holding my travel Scrabble game and like one other thing I left at his house. And he was like, yeah, I think that, and he was really like cut and dry about it. And like, you know, what did he say? Th- he was like, yeah, um, I'm just like, I think I, he was like, just like, I'm not feeling it or whatever, but okay. there was like no emotion. And I was like, okay, that's no, fine. that's, and it was totally fine. And I didn't feel bad. I didn't feel, I was like, yeah, that's okay. He didn't give me any explanation. And I was really wow. fine with that. The thought, the part that I thought was just weird was the, um, you know, opening the door and having my stuff in his hand. That part was like <laughs> the weird part for me where I was like, right, wow, like you really knew sitcom. what I, you knew what, you know, and also I was kind of mad because I made a freaking long ass drive. He lived all the way up in LA and I was coming from oh my God, that's like Orange you're County. Mad I'm like, about. I drove all the way and I got to turn my ass back home. Okay. What that's else? a classic LA thing to be mad about. Yeah. I'm like, oh, the drive. I drove <laughs> a four hours round trip to be broken up with whatevs. Um, he didn't even pour me a glass of wine. At least do it with glass of wine. So wait but, a minute. Um, you, he said that yeah. and then you were like, yeah, okay. And then you just yeah, turned totally, around and I was left? Like, yeah. yeah. Oh my God. It was so fast and I was like, okay. No. Yes, that's fine. <laughs> I think you're unusual. And then I think back because there's <laughs> then two other guys I dumped. One other, and then I think back to like the first boyfriend I had, and that is the story that's like my worst dumping story where he broke up with me. I was so young. I I was like 16 and he was 21, which already is a problem. Don't get me started on that. And uh, (laughs) uh, he broke up with me the day I got my wisdom teeth pulled uh, over AOL Instant Messenger. So I don't care about that. Like I'm not mad that he dumped me or the relationship ended. I'm more mad at how he did it, which is the sourness over how it happened, not that it happened. I'm not like, oh, I can't believe he broke up with me. I'm just like, what a fucking dick for doing it like that. Okay. Huh. But yeah. Well, so but do you they, think usually yeah. when people break up, they both know it's time. And so yeah. that's why it's more about how it happens rather than the fact that it did happen. Yeah. Because yeah. I would imagine so, if you were blindsided, it would be hurtful no matter what. Have you ever been blindsided and being broken up with? I mean, I felt like I was kind of blindsided by Jim, but then I was like, okay, if he's not into <laughs> me, he's not into me. I'm not going to waste my time. You know what? what? I, to be honest, I've never been dumped. But 
I feel like that's not because like I'm such a treasure or something. It's just like um, maybe I beat them to it or something. Where as soon that's as not- I sniff out any issue, I'm like oh. running for the hills. So what, I probably what's your, breakup, t- what's your breakup method? What do you do? What do you do? How have you? Bro- well, oh I God, do what so this fun. fuck boy did, where I like <gasps> you ghost him. Well, <laughs> I don't ghost him, but like, like I'll lead people on longer than I really should. I'll keep things going, and then once it's like completely over, then I'm like, okay, bye. Okay, bye. And then you know what explanation? No, like. Yeah, like how I do remember. you just like say, "Hey, thanks, but no thanks." Like, well, then ugh, I'm so I, toxic. I loved it after I'll be after like, like casually dating. I I really got like I really was like, oh my god, just let it easily saying, "Hey, thanks, but no thanks," it was so easy once you start doing it. it became like, yeah, I want to start. I like that idea, not just with breakups or whatever, but just you know in life. Yeah, being okay with it all. Yeah, just be okay. That's fine. No big deal. <laughs> It's easier when you're casually dating or when it's like... You're breezy so, again. Yeah. So the article also gave gave uh, some tips on how to end things, which I thought was helpful, again, whether you're a guy or a girl, because sometimes it goes the other way. We can totally be like that. So this one, most important. You don't need to tell them what it is about them you don't like. Oh, okay. You, because what you dislike about them is your problem, not theirs. True. But don't you feel like that's, they often want to know? They want to pressure you into saying all this stuff that's like mean almost. I, there was a time for a while where I wanted to know what it was. I was like, what do you, what is it? And I like racked my brain what it could be with yeah. Jim. Cause I was like, that was so, it was just out of the blue. And I mean, I didn't right. get any signals that it wasn't And good, then it, so it I comes just down figured to it that was something guy. with him. Remember that guy that would just be like, he's just not that into you. Yeah. And it's sort of He's what just you just said. Into- it's not your problem. He's just right. not into you. Or I figured it was something going on with him. Like if if he yeah. if the, if there's somebody else who's interested, what ifs? If it's if I'm not number one, then go go ahead. What ifs? So if yeah, what you dislike is your problem, not theirs. Mm-hmm. And there are simple kind of statements that you can make or things that you can say that can kind of summarize that. One of the easiest ones that's a different way of saying, like, it's not you, it's me. Uh, yeah. Uh, our lifestyles don't align. Okay. That's a I good like line. I would. I think I would, could have used that, and I probably did use that in my divorce. Yeah, like, and that's actually true. Align. It is true. Right. That's a good line. Right? Good line. And then the other one is focusing on other things or other people. Yeah, you know, I'm. I'm there's other things I'm focusing on right now or... You know, I'm, there's another person I'm focusing on. I said that as soon as Ren and I started dating. We, I mean, we became like exclusive pretty quick. And that, I mean, our, our second date, I told him that I sent these messages to the person that I was, you know, other, well, yeah. here and there going on dates with. And it was very empowering. And it felt very good to be able to like just, it felt like I was making a decision. And I was like, don't you uh, think that? You know, <clears throat> that like sometimes the thing that isn't aligning, so to speak, mm-hmm. maybe they should know about those so that they can like not do shitty things to the next girl. I mean, if it's shitty things, I think, but yeah, but so I think a lot of times with, you know, like quote unquote fuck boys or stuff right, like it's that, like chemistry it's just like, or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Drifting away or not being able, cause like, you know, pretty quick, like I knew when like I was casually dating, I was like, yeah, I'm not going to be That's with this what guy. That's what I feel. I'm here yes. for a good time, not a long time. And I would be open <laughs> about that. Well, if you happen to be interested in like making a baby with any of these people, um, you might want to know what's going on in your womb. And that's why you need modern fertility. Am I right? Hell yeah. Oh, yes. For t- modern fertility is so great. As you know, we, Sarah and I have both used it. You just take a test in the comfort of your own home and send it off and you get uh, results within 10 days about how many so eggs you have, your hormone levels, any reproductive red flags like um, polycystic. It's like a full pan, like a full fertility 
breakdown. Yeah. I mean, of all the stuff, all the different combinations of hormones, it tells you like, hey, if you kind of adjust your eating, you can work on these levels and you need to exercise more. And I'm excited to get my second test because, you know, it's important to take these tests, especially if you're in an age where you are thinking about having kids or, you know, yeah, I, I mean, ain't getting any younger. Well, that's so I'm going to do my second test, which then will monitor those and see if the changes that I've made, um, you know, have changed over time and worked. And I it's love just it. so over uh, empowering to have the information, so you know what you need to do if you would like to have a family or if you don't. And there's a fertility nurse that will resu- review your results with you if you want. Um, and right now, Modern Fertility is offering our listeners $20 off the test when you go to modernfertility.com slash brain candy. That means your test will cost $139 instead of hundreds or thousands it would cost at the doctor's office. Get $20 off your fertility test when you go to modernfertility.com slash brain candy, modernfertility.com slash brain candy. I think everyone should do this. Yes. Okay. I love it. Um, As okay. You so yes. Uh, so yeah, breakups, just do it. Just tell just them. Just do it. And then also, which I totally agree with this, I think a lot of people feel like they have to do it in person. Yeah, you why? You don't have to do it in person. No. It The, the article, and Sarah, says mm-hmm. uh, text or phone call is just fine. Especially if you haven't even had a phone call with the person. Absolutely. Just text them. Who cares? You know? Why, does the, why did the in-person thing get even started i think it's an i think it's a, a that one of those like barriers that we give ourselves like um we put a oh, it's kind of like when we say oh i need to get x y and or i need to get x done but i have to do i need to get y done but i have to do x before and whatever we we do like the thing that we're putting in our way is like a roadblock to prevent us from because of our anxiety about finishing why. You don't know? you think, though, mostly that's an old people thing? Like, I don't know a yeah. lot of, you know, 20 year olds who want to break up in person. Well, I also don't know a lot of 20 year olds, so. <laughs> well, like, they text everything, <laughs> even work stuff. They think text well, we're is gonna fine. need. we're going to need this. This is a poll. Yeah. This is here. I'm writing it down. Yeah. <laughs> Can't, do you, do, is it okay to break up? Over text or phone. It is. Yeah. Okay. I think this Pole. question will be laughable to young people because it's antiquated. Okay. Yeah. Now now we're gonna have to do two polls on there. If you're I'm gonna have <laughs> one that's like between the ages of this and this, and then this and this, and then answer for your age. I think okay. I can do that, make that work. We'll see. I'm I still am learning how to how to work Twitter. That is fun. So <laughs> Oh, Twitter, really? Well, yes, yeah, I'm like I I I realized that on trending words, you don't have to do the at or you don't have to do the hashtag. <laughs> Why? Oh, right. Yeah. You can just write it just the word picks in them there. up. Yeah. Yeah. I learned that when I saw the video. I mean, I had, I was like, oh my God, rarely do I tweet out anything, let alone at two o'clock in the morning. But when I saw the people at the Trump rally dancing to um, Killing in the Name of oh. by Rage Against the Machine, oh I was God. like, oh my God, the, this is so seeped in irony. I can't not <laughs> say anything. The, it, it's just the most insane. And if uh, you want to see something that's the exact opposite of that, look on YouTube. This is so enjoyable. This, I went down this hole one night. Um, uh, watch people's first time reaction videos to hearing that song. So like people who have never heard that song before and they listen to it and like learn the lyrics. It's so, re- it's so good. They seem to get it in about 10 seconds and figure out what they're talking about. Right. Meanwhile, these Republicans swinging these, fl- well, I Trump supporters swinging these flags around, um, uh, seem to know all the words, but have n- no idea how the context or, or what they, they actually mean. So hilarious. <laughs> that is great. Yes. Um, okay. So that was about me not knowing how to work Twitter. <clears throat> and, but I'm learning. I'm learning. Um, okay. But, uh, okay. So do I want to go I feel back like you're going to gonna go, like you're yeah. going to get on Twitter, like right as I'm sort of abandoning it. Pro- yeah. Right. There'll be like a new thing. And yeah. Because I hardly ever go on there anymore because it's just all too much with the. It is a lot. Politics and stuff. But I think you should. I love that you're going on there, but it just got yeah. a bit much for me. It is. It's that. Well, yeah. Things I have to. I have to 
you know, go, I, well, now with my good 11 o'clock phone bedtime, it's, it's been <laughs> a little bedtime. easier this week. <laughs> my phone bedtime, yes. Oh, um, yes, so, okay, my next one. Do I want to tell you about another, some other kick-ass ladies? Or there is this one that I felt like could have gone in either category because Ooh. in this story is a what I think, and you guys will definitely agree with me, a kick-ass lady, um, uh, but also a fucking dumbass dude. <laughs> and, <laughs> right? So this was one that uh, you, re- oh, oh no, my tweets aren't loading. Oh wait, hang on a second. My tweets aren't loading, to- she said. My tweets aren't loading. Um, I gotta figure out how to work the internet. So I had uh, you had introduced me to this. Um, am I the asshole? Yeah. Okay. On so, Reddit. On Reddit. Mm-hmm. Yes. So this was like you know a thread that I found on Twitter, um, but it was am I the asshole? And I posted it and was like, oh my god, we have to talk about this on the podcast. So I'm just gonna read it to you because it's so good. Okay. Um. So am I the asshole for not liking how my girlfriend dresses? And I think somebody tagged me in this and sent this. Okay. Yeah, get ready. Am I the asshole for not liking how my girlfriend dresses for work? So I, 43-year-old male, don't think I'm in the wrong here, but my mother is very angry at me and my best friend said I was a horrible person for saying what I did and I'd be lucky if my girlfriend didn't put me out with the garbage since <laughs> I decided I wanted to act like trash. That's what they said. Wow. My, my girlfriend, 34, is a preschool teacher, and for some reason I can't explain, she dresses like Miss Frizzle. <gasps> like a dress with the pattern of whatever they're studying. She makes That's a lot adorable. of them herself. I know. <gasps> she makes a lot of them herself, now including matching masks. The kids love it, and <laughs> oh the parents gosh. seem to think it's great. I, did, I don't like the amount of tension she gets, and honestly, I wow. prefer if she came home and changed before running errands. On Friday, she helped my mom with something after work, and she was still in her weird dress. I told her before <laughs> I don't like when she dresses that way, but she tells me I don't have to like it, but I have no right to tell her how to dress. I was upset she went out like that with my mother and told her that my mom said she was an embarrassment and asked mm. that she please not dress like that again if they're going out. I was not expecting her to call my mom and apologize. When my mom asked what she meant, uh, she told her what I said. My mom was furious, explained she doesn't have a problem with how my girlfriend dresses <laughs> and thinks it's great she spends extra time doing things to engage her students. Yes. My, mom, my mom then yelled at me for lying to my girlfriend and trying to throw her under the bus because I was being a, an insecure jerk. My girlfriend and I got in a huge fight and she said she should be embarrassed and wow. I said she should be embarrassed to be seen in public like that. Mm. She said the only thing she was embarrassed by was me. Yes. She hadn't spoken to me or done anything for me since. My friend said I was this is crazy. She hasn't spoken to me or done anything for me right. since. I hate him even more. Right. My friend said I was horrible and called me trash. I, I shouldn't have lied but I think my girlfriend should take what I think about her clothes into consideration. I'm not sorry for expecting her to dress more appropriately in public. Am I really such an asshole here? Wow. Yes. Yes, yes. Yes, you are. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I have an update that I hadn't heard uh, what? Uh, yet. Um, this Because I, I found this probably about four or five days ago. Maybe, uh, yeah, a couple days ago. And the update as of this morning... I'm sure you will all be pleased to know we broke up tonight. She said I'm controlling and narrow-minded. Correct. <laughs> so she broke up with me. Good for her. Because he put this on every single person that i saw in here was like your mom and friend are totally right and the comments were even worse because he said things like yeah she usually takes out the trash and makes me dinner and she hasn't oh uh i never said she was my property but she usually cooks dinner and does the laundry for I both of us and hasn't she was been. my property he said oh uh, <sighs> wow he First didn't have all, to say it she's adorable <clears throat> she's adorable wouldn't you love we your love kid her. to be in her class I want my, yeah. I, yeah. And I was like, uh, I wish I could dress like Miss Frizzle every day. And <laughs> She's that, that living was the dream. She is living the dream. And she makes them all and she, now she has matching masks. I think that he revealed his, he like showed his hand when he said he doesn't like that she gets so much attention. Yes. Mm-hmm. That is what everybody said. And then there was another woman who posted a picture of her. She's like, I dress like Miss Frizzle every day and my fiance loves it. And I definitely dated those guys who didn't like me to get any attention and like wanted me to hide away. And yeah. I, so I think you've been with somebody who didn't like how much attention you got. 
Yep. And mm-hmm. uh, this rings a bell. Yeah, so why do you think I brought it up? Yeah. I was like, I had to ask Susie, have you ever had somebody who uh, who tried to control what you wear? No. Uh, can you imagine? Well, maybe. <laughs> yes. Right. You well, can. I did have, I did, uh, yeah, um, huh, he, this uh, individual <laughs> told me that he didn't like when my hair was curly. I remember that. That was one of my least favorite things. Ever, because then I was like, "Ho ho, we but, ain't never straighten it again." But don't you think the it's also because be. you get attention from your yes, curly it is. Hair. I get, yeah. and every single time I have, I wear my hair, especially when I lived in Orange County, where like nobody has curly hair mm-hmm. like me. I, I, every single time we went out, people would say something, and something like that. Mm-hmm. Wow, that that's insecurity in the other person. It's weird because Who you would cares? assume that if you're posting in that reddit thread of am i the asshole you kind of know that you are yeah you do so like why doesn't he stop doing that i think he just wanted like you know maybe he he's gonna, wanted like, attention oh he wants attention he's just di- he's dying for it i Ew, think so get rid- i'm so glad they broke up yeah she's gonna find some awesome dude who loves and her I miss ho- frizzle and- outfits look at how she didn't even ghost him and she just said it directly just like she should <laughs> right yeah, she's, she's going to love somebody in those Miss Frizzle outfits. She's probably a brainiac. It, oh my, can we get her? Can we? <laughs> well, I'm finding this woman. New note. Find her. I mean, she's probably That's anonymous. literally what I wrote in my anonymous? notes. You're going to have to Somehow, time. We're, I, so I'm going to, so we have to find this. If you are her, know. Internet, do your job. Out. Yeah. If you know Miss Frizzle, please reach out. <laughs> It's so great. I can't believe so, she yeah, makes her own dresses and then made matching masks. Right. And I. how about this dick who lied and said, oh, my mom said, I love it, his mom's on, on her side, it's too. It's weird, though, because She's she like, raised him. Like, how did he get like yeah, this? Yeah, but who knows? What We don't know what dad's like. Well, that's so true because uh, as looking at my son, please don't judge me based upon him. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? I You're such an amazing like, human and a gem and well, so smart so and much, so wise. There's such a limited amount that you can do to sort of mold them. And oh, there's right. so many things that can go wrong. So I take it back. I shouldn't have judged his mother. <laughs> <laughs> She's a lovely woman. Though. Yeah, she probably did her oh, damn best. Right. Yeah. So there's another. We're going to file that. Again, under jackass dudes, because, you know, I I, I feel like she is also a badass lady. Mm -hmm. So, you know, good for her. And uh, and another story about, well, the badass ladies, Mm -hmm. but not human ladies. This one just tickles me so much. So uh, female mongooses, which again, (laughs) question mark. Yeah. Mongoose. And then I was telling Ren, I was like telling him what I'm going to talk about today. And he was like, no, sir, it's Mongai. <laughs> <laughs> I would believe it. Which, is like, which just cracked me up. We were having a giggle over that. <laughs> so um, mongooses are very territorial mm-hmm. and they stay in their own little like group. And so they're, they rarely leave the group that they're born into. And for this reason, they're awfully like you know, the group can be genetically, re- closely genetically related, but don't worry because female mongooses have figured this shit out. And so what happens is m- all these female mongooses, which sounds so weird when I say mongooses. And like, I don't, what that, even I, I is a mongoose? Oh, um, they are, do they look like regular they, goose? They're <laughs> a small, like, do they look like regular goose? Stop being <laughs> hilarious. I almost slept on that joke right there. Um, they look like they're kind of cat-like. And they're kind of like a cat and a ferret, sort mm-hmm. of. And they're this, they're, the, that's what, it, they're found in parts of Africa. Um, oh, yeah. Are Adam they, just showed me a picture. Those things are oh. real cute. Oh, you think they're cute? I feel like well, they look kind of sneaky. Well, they are, they do look sneaky, but they're like cuddly kind of. Yeah, well, sneaky and cuddly is exactly their this these gals' mo. Oh, so so you nailed it. You hit it on the head. Hit the nail on the head. So they all like menstruate within seven to ten, or not menstruate, but they go through this fertile mating period for seven to ten days of each other. And mm-hmm. while this happens, all the males like stand guard, and they're like trying to fend off the rival mates. But the female mongooses 
are like, oh, we can't just be like breeding with these same guys all the time. So what they do is they sneak out while the men are watching guard and they deliberately start fights with rival groups and then they use the unfolding chaos to sneak off and mate with the enemy. No way. That's like in a challenge house. Exactly. <laughs> That's hilarious. They, and so they, br- British universities, like two different studies were done and they analyzed the data from these wild mongooses in Uganda and they found out that this is what they do. They like sneak off and the females start fights to gain genetic benefits and uh, while well, the males in the group as a whole pay for the costs. How does it get them genetic benefits? Because they get to then procreate or breed with another genetic group. They wouldn't be able to really leave like, you know, they can't exactly like sneak off on their own. It's like they're, they're very controlled. These mongoose (laughs) mongooses. They're like, nope, this is our territory. You can't leave. They don't interact with other, if any, if they go, if, uh, uh, during times of, you know, if it weren't chaos, they would go and sneak off and try to, you know, breed with another mongoose and they would be attacked for like coming into, you know, enemy territory but it's like while the fight's happening over here they, it's exactly like the challenge house anytime tribe crazy. people oh my god i didn't even think about that really until i just like put Mapped that is out. what would yeah. happen people would fight almost deliberately and then the people who didn't want to get caught hooking up would go sneak off and bang and yep. like producers have to pick, what do we want to do? Watch right. the fight or do we want, and they always choose the fight because, you know, you at least, everybody's out yeah, in public. Yeah, you don't have to blur it. Yeah. You don't have to blur. Oh my God. Yeah, mongoose are totally like. Wow. You, Reality you know, TV challenge. stars. Reality TV stars. <sighs> Who yeah. knew? They do have that like Meerkat Manor, which is kind of like reality TV for Meerkats. That is enjoyable and mongoose too. should get, they can get their own show. Yeah, they really should. I feel like mongoose are like more uh, sneaky meerkats mm-hmm. like more violent meerkats and Damn. don't like mongoose like fight with snake snakes they do right i remember how like, do you know all tabby. this because that was from uh uh the what is it rear kipling's uh ricky ticky tavy oh my god that's hilarious wasn't that a book i think that's who it wrote is. it too yeah okay Whew. yeah wow. so my those god. are my mongoose facts and yeah. Well, let's... Uh, we got some badass chicks. Let's some wind jackass it. jackass guys, and let's wind it down. Well, it started with some intense uh, roof leakage <sighs> in Sarah's apartment. Yes. Glad we we were able to come down a little bit from that. We yes. talked about some, some climbers, some yes. chicks. Who, oh, a chick who's setting records. Who's Good old Emily Harrington. bloody head, but keeps on oh. going. Despite being 34 years young. <laughs> 34 years young yep. and then we learned about the fuck boy who wants to do better yeah we learned about how to break up that you don't have to do it via you uh, gave some uh, very you can do it yeah and like helpful breakup tips that was good sarah yeah i thought i thought you know especially because like dating right now is kind of weird mm-hmm. you know and even seeing people in person is weird so if you have to like we don't want to be like forcing ourselves to be in face-to-face situations when we could just handle a breakup over the phone or text come on yeah absolutely yeah work smarter not harder people and then so we learned that that guy was the asshole definitely the asshole um miss frizzle is amazing and anybody who dresses like her is a treasure Mm -hmm. and she totally dodged a bullet and um you know female uh mongoose uh like to get it on they're like like to get it on yeah they're they're we don't want to slut shame them. But no, we're sex positive with mongoose. We're definitely and sex humans. positive, you know. And get it how you live it, mongoose. Get it how you live it, and uh, <sighs> don't forget to leave us a five star review and subscribe. Yes. And if you have any uh, hilarious stories that you see, uh, whether it's an oh MIB asshole or yeah, uh, awesome badass chicks, or you know. They Fuck send boys, the best what stuff. Ifs. You really, keep really it coming. do. So keep oh, it coming and we love you all. One more thing. Oh, yeah. what, what, what? Well, this is going to come out on the Monday before Thanksgiving and then there's no episode on Thanksgiving. So I just wanted to wish everybody happy Thanksgiving oh. and tell them that we are thankful for them for listening yes. to the show. Gobble, gobble. Gobble, gobble. And don't forget to watch Planes, Trains, and Automobiles because it's a great Thanksgiving movie. Oh, that's a good call. I will. Yes. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Bye. Bye. Did you know that everyone has an aura? 
Do you know what color your aura is? Maybe you have a fiery red personality or a quiet and calm blue or green. You could be an organized and methodical yellow or an explosive purple. Come join me, Mystic Michaela, on my podcast, Know Your Aura, to find out all about how your personality can be explained in colors. (music) 